Okay, so we've worked with derivatives in terms of matrices, but it's time to answer the question, what really is a derivative? And for that, we need a definition. A function f of x is said to be differentiable at x equals a, if and only if there is a linear transformation, df at a, called the derivative of f at a, such that the following holds. Now, you know what this is. It's a limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Oh, no, wait a minute. It, this is a little more complicated because what we need to do is put what this linear transformation does to h up in the numerator, subtract that off from f of a plus h minus f of a, and then get 0 on the right-hand side. But notice that all of these quantities in the numerator are really vector quantities. And we're doing vector uh, addition and subtraction. And on the right-hand side, we have the 0 vector. And we're dividing by a vector h. Hey, wait a minute. What? That's not going to work. We need to scalarize that and divide by a, a scalar. In this case, the length of h is the right thing to do. And we need to take the limit over all h such that that length is going to 0. Now, uh, this is a, f a proper definition, and so it's detailed. Some students find this to be a little confusing. You should think in terms of what you learned from Taylor series, namely that f of a plus h is f of a plus the derivative of f at a times h plus higher order terms, stuff that is at most quadratic as h is going to 0. Now, if you don't remember your Taylor series, you might want to review that a little bit. I find this is a great way to understand this technical definition. OK, let's take a look at a simple linear example and compute a derivative for real. Consider a matrix A and let f of x be defined as a times x for x of the proper size. That is, it's just multiplication by a constant. In this case, the matrix of partial derivatives of this function is clearly giving you a back again. You should check that if there's any doubt in your mind. And this uh, seems like it's going to be really simple. If f of x is constant a times x, the derivative of f is equal to a. This holds at all input values since the derivative is just a constant. OK, that's certainly what the answer would appear to be. But is this the truth? Is it, in fact, true that the derivative of f is a? Let's compute the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a minus a times h, the putative derivative, all divided by length of h. Now, because f of x is really um, multiplication by a, I really get, for that first term in the numerator, a times quantity x plus h. Now, because matrix vector multiplication is linear, that gives me a times x plus a times h. Then I subtract a times x, subtract a times h, I get exactly 0. I don't need to worry about limits at all. OK, so this one, in fact, works out very nicely. We can compute this derivative explicitly. In general, it is true that when the derivative exists, it is always equal to the matrix of partial derivatives. This is going to be so helpful to you. It's going to mean that you don't really have to worry about the definition as long as the derivative exists.